Hello, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at this. This is the Flex Rig, which was produced as part of the CG Cookie Animation Training Toolkit DVD. Uh, the rig is now released under Creative Commons license, which means that we can download it and uh, use it how we like with attribution. Uh, it's not just a rig, but a character builder also. One can generate tons of different looking characters and have them all rigged and ready for animation super quick. So I figured it'd be worth spending a little bit of time just getting to know the rig a little bit. Although my main focus is going to be how to prepare and link the rig and character into your working scene. Because there's a few things that we need to know to get things working properly. So if you're interested in trying out some animation, hopefully this video will be of interest. The guys have done a truly excellent job at making a rig that's fun to use. It's a versatile character builder. It's a lot of fun to play with. I'm super excited about it. So uh, get yourself over to cgcookie.com. Search for the Flex Rig. I'm sure you'll find it. Use the download link and it comes in a zip file, which I've unzipped here. And we're ready to open CG Flex Rig uh, dot blend into, uh, so I just drag it into my blender here. And let's get started. So this will be the scene that greets you when you first open the Flex Rig. Over on the left hand side, uh, some credits to these guys. They, As I said before, they've done a truly excellent job at uh, making this rig. It's, it's fantastic fun to use and the character builder is just great as we're going to find out. A reminder of the license there and, uh, and a quick layer guide. We don't need this right now so I'm just going to drag this across and back in. Now the first thing I'm going to cover are the aspects of how to build the different characters. Then we're going to investigate what we need to do in order to prepare the rig for saving to a character file, which we'll use as a library file then to link in to our scene. So with that in mind, what we've got is this little widget over on the right hand side. There's a head widget, a body widget, and these ones down here control the colors of things. I can just collapse the rig layers just now because we'll need that later on for the, when we're animating. But so far as the character building goes, uh, when we have these selected, different properties appear on, in the end properties panel. Remember, that's the panel that appears when you hit, hit the end key. So you can see here we've got different hairstyles that we can choose from. We could change the size of the, the head and uh, brow depth, all manner of stuff uh, here. With the body widget selected, we've got a ton of different uh, clothing variants that we can choose from. I think there's, there's absolutely loads of these, so surely find something that, uh, that you like. Change the shoes here and different aspects of the body. So we've got neck length there. We've got, I don't know, arm length. Perhaps some gen more general controls lower down. You can have a sort of muscly person or a, or a, or a fatter one. Just great. And the colors, yeah, you can change stuff like the uh, the, the color of the hair and uh, things like that. If you shift click the widgets, you can see that uh, you get all the properties that you can play with. And as you can see, as I said, there's an absolute ton of them. If you didn't want to go through all this, there are some pre-made ones. We can go to the armature button on the right hand side, the object data button. And in the pose library, there's a load to choose from here. And in order to apply these to the rig, we use the little hourglass, uh, eyeglass I suppose it is there. So you can select one of these and uh, and, and press that. And then you can see that the, the, the variety of the characters that they've managed to uh, create out of this. And we've got the little person there. This is great. So like, we've got to assume at some point that you've, um, you, you, you've played with all of these and you've got a character that uh, you're pretty happy with. Now, I'm going to make a couple here because then we're going to use those to link in. So first thing what we need to do is go to the object button here and there's a couple of groups which we need to rename uh, um, to something decent uh, just so that we've got so that we know when we're using them as a library file what's what basically. So we don't want to overwrite this obviously I'm going to basically I'm just going to call this one Daisy and you can see the other um, group has got a low res by it so we're going to call this one Daisy dot low res just like that and then we're ready to save this file out as a character file so I'm going to go file save as I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now you might want to reorganize it in into your library files and stuff like that so but I'm just going to call this one Daisy hit enter and then I'm going to go back to the character builder here and I'm just going to maybe choose this Bob guy I don't know all right we'll go back to the object buttons here because we need to now change these to be Bob and Bob low res 
Okay, then we can save this out as a character file as well. Let's call him Bob on the desktop again. And that's basically what we need to do to prepare these uh, for, for our scene. So I'm ready to close this now. And I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to open up a fresh instance of Blender. And we're going to assume that maybe this is our scene now that we've got and uh, we're ready to link in our characters. So I was just going to make a bit of a scene here. Uh, what we need to do is go to the File menu and we're going to choose Link. Now the difference between Link and Append is Link, if you make any changes in the file being linked from, they'll be propagated to your working scene. So this is more or less ideal if we've got different props and stuff like that that we're going to link in. If you wanted to change the texture in, in, in the library file, then that gets propagated through to your scene. So this is more or less ideal for what we want. I press the link there, go to the desktop. First of all, I'm going to link in our daisy. So we can go inside the blend file here and you see a ton of different uh, directories and stuff. We need to find the group directory and you'll see here that this is why we renamed them so that we know what we're dealing with. So we can select both the groups here and we've got a choice. We can either instance the groups straight away um, or we can turn this off and the group and they won't appear in the scene file immediately. We'll have to add them. So I'm going to um, I'm going to check this on this one and then when I link in the other one we'll see we'll see what the other option is so I'm going to go link append and here we have our, our daisy now well, the first thing we will notice is that there's no rig associated with this so what we need to do is press Control alt and P and this uh, sort of search box will type will come up we need to search for rig and choose rig and then we'll see we have all of our um, our controls and stuff like that. One thing that we'll notice is when we press N to bring the properties panel up and I select one of these uh, well, these widgets, uh oh we haven't got any of our controls. Now, this is why we need to link in the uh, little Python script that just generates all of those. So we're going to go file, link once again and this time we need to find our um, actually, yeah, we'll go to the Daisy blend here, doesn't matter which one. And we'll find in the text folder this riguispanels.py. So we can link that in now. And we'll see we still don't have our controls. What we need to do is open up a text editor. So I'll just drag this across, change this into a text editor, open up the riguispanels.py. See a whole load of stuff in here. We need to find the run script button and boom, you've got all your controls there. So that's just great. Now what we'll notice is that we've got the high res and the uh, the, the low res daisy uh, kind of in the same place at the moment. I can alt and right click and then if there's multiple objects under the cursor, I get this select menu up. I'm gonna choose the daisy low res and then I'm gonna press M and move, the, move it to uh, layer 11 there. I'm also gonna select the rig and press M and move that so it's holding down shift this time to shift click layer 11 so that it's on both layers. And we do this because when we're animating if you want optimum viewport performance and playback when you're when, when, when you're trying to pose the character and stuff like that the high res model is probably not going to give you the kind of performance that you want. So putting these on different layers allows us to um, animate with the lower resolution version um, and play it back using this and easily switch between the two. So we can see actually if I go into pose mode on our rig here and just uh, maybe move our arms about a little bit that when we move over to layer 11 it looks like nothing's changed but in fact we just need to poke the rig a bit to get it to update. So you see how that's now uh, working like that. So if I just um, now grab this along the x-axis, move it out of the way. We're going to link in now our uh, our other other guy to the scene. So I'm going to go File, Link. Now we're going to find the desktop. We're going to choose Bob here. We're going to go to the Group panel, and we'll choose Bob and Bob Low Res. And this time I'm going to uncheck the Instance Groups option and go to Link Append. Now you see nothing's happened this time, but what I need to actually I'll just move that empty out of the way as well. I'm I should have moved the everything together just just a moment ago, but I didn't, so I've, I've messed it up a little bit. But it's not the end of the world. We go Shift A, 
add in a uh, group instance and this you can see again why we've renamed these groups because now it's uh, it's obvious with what's what so we choose bob here and once again we're going to compose control alt and p and it's already selected for us we're going to link in bob's rig and the other way to manage whether you're choosing the high resolution or the low resolution uh, version of the mesh is to select it go to the object button here and we can find in the duplications panel Bob and we'll also have Bob low res so this is another way of choosing uh, which uh, which rig is which you see this gives uh, gives really good uh, smooth and fast playback uh, or performance rather and what you'll find is once again that if I select the uh, the object here we'll go back to Bob uh, the high res that uh, he's not posed once again we need to click inside the rig in pose mode just click again and he'll snap to uh, to to is the, the correct position just like that so I think it might be worthwhile covering a few of the animation controls the FK and uh, IK so uh, let's get on and do that next so yeah I just removed uh, some of the objects from the scene so we don't uh, get too distracted um, the first thing that you might want to know is that the arms by default are using forward kinematics and that means when we select one of the arm bones here and move it around we are working forwards down the bone chain so that the children are moving uh, along with the uh, with along with the parent just like that the feet on the other hand are using inverse kinematics which means we can grab the end of the bone chain and uh, drag it around and just like that and that also means that the extremities uh, stay in place so we could grab the body widget here for example and uh, move the body around and the feet will stay in place until we reach some sort of extreme uh, like that where as you can see rather than the legs stretching uh, the, uh, they, uh, the, they come away from the IK controllers there so with that in mind, the rig offers a way to select between whether you're using inverse kinematics or forward kinematics for the arms particularly. So I'm just going to press uh, A to select everything and Alt G, Alt R, Alt S to clear the location, rotation and scale. And you can see the rig main properties here, loads of different sliders to control whether bones follow other bones and stuff like that. So have a play with these, see what they do. The ones we're interested in right now will be whether or not the uh, whether the arms are using forward kinematics or inverse kinematics. So in fact, what we need to do is enable arm IK and arm um, arm R IK, and we'll turn off the uh, forward kinematics bones here, and we'll see when we select these uh, these uh, IK controller bones that we get the properties of uh, the sliders rather whether we're using FK or IK. So we just need to slide these all the way to one. And uh, then you can see if we grab the bones that we can now use uh, forward kinematic, um, inverse kinematics on the hands uh, just like that. So this would be useful if he had his arm, um, say, up against a wall or something like that. Then this hand would stay there while you can move the body around um, just, just like that. So, um, But well, for walk cycles and stuff where he'll be swinging the arms, it's probably better to stick with uh, forward kinematics just because you get uh, sort of an easier, easier motion curve there um, as, you, uh, as, you, as you animate. So yeah, that's about all. I'd just urge you to have a play with it and get get familiar with all the controls. I suppose we could just demonstrate briefly. There's also these uh, these f the facial controls here, which is for if you would be doing uh, lip sync or something like that. So you can give him a bit of a smile. Uh, one of some of these controls can be scaled as well. So for example, to puff the cheeks out like that, you can press S to scale and also move this up to kind of push the cheek up like that. Uh, you've got the eyes going, the uh, the eyebrows, uh, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so it's as I say, it's a fully fully functional rig. They've really put a lot of thought and effort into it, and uh, and it does it does indeed uh, show there. So. Yep. Okay, that's all for now. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this has been useful. Happy blending and see you next time.